Oh, it's up. All right, so um, this video is about how to solve very simple algebraic equations that only contain a single power of x. So um, I, uh, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just throw some examples out here, okay? And I'm going to go real slow, and I'm going to be real systematic so you can see every step of the way what I'm doing. All right, so let's say we had an equation like this. If we had um, 3x plus 4x equals 14. So we're, we're, we're solving for x. So remember, when you're solving for x, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get x by itself. So the first step in that process is to combine like terms. Um, combining like terms means putting terms together that are of the same sort, of the same type. They're like, okay? So do you see how 3x and 4x are like terms because they're both just a number times an x? What that means is that I can put them together. I can combine them into a single term. So 3x and 4x, when I put them together, become a 7x. Okay, now instead of 3x plus 4x equals 14, I now just have 7x equals 14. So I rewrote this as that. I rewrote 3x plus 4x as 7x. Okay, so now the final step of the equation to solve for x is to simply get rid of this times 7. Well, the way you get rid of a times 7 is by dividing both sides by 7. So I go 7 divided by 7, but remember, I have to do the same thing to the right side as I did to the left side. So just like I divided this side by 7, I had to divide this side by 7 also. So 7 and 7, this crosses off. So x is all that's left here. Well, 14 and 7 is equal to 2. So that means that x equals 2. That makes sense, right? Because now, look, I can check this equation by substituting 2 back into the equation for x. If I put a 2 here and I put a 2 here, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 4 times 2 is 8, 6 plus 8 equals 14. Right, it works. Perfect. Okay, so that was the first example. I'm going to give another example now. All right, what if we had an equation that looks something like this? <clears throat> um, 10x equals 4 plus 6x. So how do I go about doing this? Um, the first step is that I need to, again, combine like terms. Now the difference is here, uh, as compared to the last example, is that this x, um, these two terms that contain x are on different sides of the equal sign. So what that means, instead of just combining them, I actually have to move one of these terms over or subtract it from both sides. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this 6x and I'm going to go minus 6x and minus 6x. So what I did is I just did the same thing to one side as I did to the other. Now I chose a specific thing that I was going to do. I, I um, subtracted 6x because I knew that it would cancel out this positive 6x and that's what I wanted to do. So now I just have 10x minus 6x equals positive 4x because 10 minus 6 is 4 and what you do is you just multiply, you just subtract the numbers in front, you don't touch the x. Okay, so I have 4x equals 4 because 4 was what was left, okay? This 6x is gone, so I don't write it. All right, so now I have 4x equals 4, and just like we did up here, well, I, instead of dividing by 7, we're going to divide by 4 to get rid of the times 4. So 4s go away. Same thing to one side as I do to the other. So 4 over 4 equals what? 1. So x equals 4 over 4, x equals 1. Perfect. We're done. Again, we can check the equation. We can check this by putting x in. 10 times 1 is 10 equals 4 plus 6 times 1 is 6, 4 plus 6 is 10. Perfect. It works. All right. So the third example is going to be um, kind of a combination of these two. All right. It's going to be 2 plus 3x equals negative 5x plus 18. So watch what I'm going to do. Now, um, the reason I gave you this third example is because it illustrates sort of a subtle little... Um, point, which I think is important to go over, and that is whenever you're faced with one of these situations in which you have just a number and then you have some x over here and you have an equal sign and then you have some x and some number, the first thing you have to do is you have to decide which side of the equation is going to be the side that you put the x's on and which side of the equation is going to be the side where you just put the numbers on. Because the idea is you want to get everything with an x to one side and everything that doesn't have an x to the other side. Okay, so you have to choose. How about this? So I'm just going to choose that I'm going to say I want the right side of the equation to be where all the x's are. So that what that means is that any x that's on the left side 
See, I'm going to actually have to take this negative 5x and bring it over. I need to get rid of the x on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that. I'm going to add 5x to this side. Okay, that's going to cross it off, and that's going to bring that 5x over here. Okay, so I'm going to add 5x to both sides. All right. So what that means is that I'm actually going to end up with an 8x on this side, right? So how about this? So I'm gonna do this all in one step. So now I want to get I'm gonna leave this here for now though, right? So now I want to get rid of this too. Because remember I want to bring all the numbers to the right side of the equation, just like I wanted to bring all the x's to the left side, okay? So to get rid of a positive two, I'm gonna take a negative two. That's gonna make this go away, and then I'm gonna put a negative two on this side of the equation. So now let's rewrite this um in light of the fact that we just did all this switching around, okay? So a three x and a five x make an 8x. A positive 18 and a negative 2 make a positive 16 because 18 minus 2 is 16. So now I'm in a very good situation because I'm, I've gotten down to a situation where I just have a number times x equals some number. Now it's very simple to solve because all I do now is divide by 8. Divide by 8 because a division by 8 cancels out a multiplication by 8. So boom, boom, goes away and x equals 2.